All right, match three on the play. I guess we'll keep, but this isn't exactly like the hand we want. GLHF. <clears throat> I'm thinking about switching to uh, to Forgotten Caves instead of a uh, instead of um, Valakuts, because uh, <clears throat> cool little police boy. Um, because I'm not really sure about this fella cut. It just, it's just kind of too expensive to really, um, to really, uh, um, to really do that much. I mean, like, because, for example, that last game, we could have played it tapped, but I think if we had the, uh, I think if we had a Forgotten Cave, we would have just paid one to cycle it. Well, let's, uh, let's get our light up the stage going. Alrighty. What we want to do is we want to hit land so we can play both and get full value. Eh. It's okay though. We're pretty likely to get uh, pretty likely to get value from these flame slashes next turn. Yeah, the other nice thing about Forgotten Cave is we can, if we can cycle it uh, and hopefully draw more mountains, um, yeah, then like it could also solve the mountain issue. Okay, so we're definitely trying to uh, flame slash both of these. That's for sure. We're definitely flame slashing this, and we're definitely keeping a. We're definitely holding up fire eyelid. I think we're gonna crack this into turn, and I think they got fatal push. Can't imagine them taking seven here. Oh, well, they did take seven. Liliana, Liliana, all right. I mean, if they have Ren and Six, then then Abbott's not as good. But um, until we actually see Ren and Six, I think I think the extra power is uh is worth it. Should we play Valakut Awakening? See, like this is kind of if this was um forgotten cave, I just cycle it right here. I'm gonna play it, but this this could be totally wrong. And perhaps against better advice, I'll ditch both. I think it worked out. It's a you know I don't know maybe Valakut has more merit than it seems. Sometimes it's hard to tell. That was a good showing, though. No doubt about that. 
And we've even got another one left over. Because this also pumps the team. So there's that too. I still kind of feel like Forgotten Cave might be better though. Because it's just so much less mana intensive to just cycle it out of your hand. <sighs> this is going to gum up the board. You know, we probably should have flashbacked uh, Lava Dart. Bring him that a 2 is pretty strong. But they're effectively at 3 anyway, though, so there is that. Um... I'm gonna. I'm just gonna flashback Firebolt. They probably have a removal spell, but at least they're gonna have to take one if they use it. Bringing them out to an effective two. Okay, well, or they just. Or that's GG. Uh, strange hand from the opponent. Strange hand. Okay, definitely Relic. Definitely Ratchet Bomb for the big creatures. For the Blast Zone. I think they're just. They're just rock, so I think Blood Moon is not really that great. Flame Slash came in handy there, but sometimes it just rots in your hand and doesn't do anything. So I think Flame Slash and Lava Dart come out. And one nice thing about having four Horizon Lands is that uh, we can bring in... Yeah. Having only 12 actual mountains is kind of potentially powerful. That was a good showing for Valakut, but it's a tricky card though, and it's, there's also a luck element there, because we happened to get Lava Dart, which was like the perfect card to draw against that Liliana. Maybe we'll master the ways of Valakut. It's definitely looking like, like four tap lands. And for uh, Horizon Lands is probably where we want to be. We can't do four. We can't do eight Horizon Lands because uh, we can't just afford to take that much damage. <clears throat> another, yeah, another thing about Valakut that's not nice is that it's vulnerable to discard. They might take it actually, but they'll probably take the Relic. Yeah. But, like, if this was our only red source, then that would be a big problem. Yeah, you know what? We're, we're switching to, uh, to Forgotten Cave. Because, like, right there, um, we're only playing this tap just because it's just, uh, it's just more mana efficient. But we'd, uh, we'd increase our uh, threat density if that was Forgotten Cave. So even though we had a good showing last game, I think, I think, we, I think uh, Forgotten Cave is... Is the better card here? I mean, it doesn't it doesn't do the job of um pumping the team or I mean at least directly pumping the team or directly discarding Blood Moon. The thing about Blood Moon though is it's still not completely a dead card because it can still trigger prowess. I know that seems kind of like kind of like a cope in a way, um, but uh, you know. All right, let's play this. I think I'm tempted to just play Firebolt. Nah. It's not the end of the world if they discard it. I'm going to hold up a land just in case they've got like abrupt decay for this. <laughs> but yeah, just uh. Okay, okay. Um, one thing we could do now, yeah, let's, uh, let's get this out of the way. Hmm. 
We could just double Firebolt. Um, but I kind of like the idea of... We could Blast Zone, too. Let's double Firebolt. Pretty sweet ability. So we may want to discard before they can grab Tarmogoyf, but we can also just charge Blast Zone and go from there. And I think that is what we'll do. And they are actual Jund, actually. We thought they were Rock, but they are Jund. So they can eat their Tarmogoyf, but... Doesn't concern us too much. We have the blast zone as the answer. That is fine. I guess I'll eat the soul scar. We're definitely putting counter on this. We're probably blowing this. Hmm. I think we can wait to blow this one more turn. Yeah, because we couldn't really afford to let that uh, late up the stage get uh, get discarded. You know, we could double stomp next turn. It's not the most efficient use of mana. But it would get the job done. We might cycle the Street Wraith just to be, uh, yeah, let's cycle the Sunbait Canyon just to be mana efficient. Alright, they're abrupt decaying the relic. Might be a uh, cling dust. Okay, that's odd. That's an odd choice. I would have thought they'd go after a fireball. Very, very odd choice. Um, we only have two copies also. Alright, so uh, here's the plan. We play this. Play this. We stomp. And we stomp. So we dealt with this without even having to use a 
<coughs> blast zone. I think that's pretty good if I do say so myself. Let's drop one of these. Can hold up lightning bolt. We can also just sack the uh, horizon land. Eh, no, it's, uh, it's definitely bolt in response. Really awkward game, but hey, is what it is, right? I think we'll stomp and uh, and play this because we just don't want this to get discarded. It turns out that this uh, Balakut was doing good work. Oh, uh... recording this one though. So, alright, cool. Um, this is an interesting, uh, yeah, Magic Matt on YouTube, but best way to find me is search M Hayashi since there's another magic mat that has a bigger <laughs> channel that's not magic related. LOL. Um, Let's see here. Uh, yeah, let's just attack and <laughs> ah. glad you like them. <clears throat> this, I guess. Somehow the opponent just really um, didn't... I guess, yeah, maybe Bloodbraid Elf is where the gravy train can start and getting stuck on three mana. <laughs> Yep. Although, not here specifically. The two damage. But at but any point before, yeah. GG's. Alrighty, well, nice. Dang, yeah, too, too bad, kind of. 
not a lot of action. <clears throat> Alright, well, uh, try next time.